Shortly after 4 a.m. on Tuesday, the 17th of December, 1968, two gunmen burst through the doorway into room 137 at the Roadway Inn in Atlanta, Georgia. What followed was one of the most bizarre and sensational crimes in American history. Inside the hotel room, Barbara Jane Mackle, the 20-year-old heiress and daughter of a wealthy Florida businessman, was recovering from illness. Her mother was there caring for her and overseeing her recovery. The kidnappers bound the mother and abducted the daughter. Then they drove their victim to an isolated pine forest on the outskirts of town. They forced Barbara into a coffin-like box and buried her deep underground. Her only contact with the outside world was a narrow air tube that reached to the surface. Nobody knew where she was except the kidnappers. And they threatened that they'd never reveal her whereabouts unless her father met their demands and paid them a ransom of half a million dollars. Her fate was sealed. If the money wasn't provided, that box would become Barbara Mackle's tomb and she would die all alone. Her body would never be found. There was nothing she could do. Can anyone hear me? Her only hope of rescue depended on the ransom being paid. Make sure you hear the inspiring story of her father's love and his desperate attempt to rescue his kidnapped daughter. And you'll be surprised to discover that there's more to this ransom story than expected, and it may even have implications for you and me. Emory University is located on a beautiful campus in the vibrant city of Atlanta, the capital of the state of Georgia in the United States. It was founded in 1836 and is one of the oldest private universities in the United States. Today, it ranks among the world's leading research universities and is one of the top institutions in America. Emory's 133,000 alumni include a US Vice President, a Supreme Court Justice, US Senators and Representatives, governors, university presidents, philanthropists, entrepreneurs, entertainers, and even an astronaut. The university attracts students from over 100 foreign countries and from all 50 states of America. In 1968, one of those students was 20-year-old Barbara Jane Mackle, a wealthy young heiress from Florida. Her father, Robert Mackle, was a multimillionaire who owned the $65 million Deltona Corporation, one of the biggest real estate home building companies in America. In December, an influenza epidemic spread through the Emory campus and hit the student body hard. Soon, the university infirmary was full of sick students. When Barbara came down with the flu, there wasn't any room left in the infirmary. So her mother, Jane, drove all the way from Coral Gables, a posh suburb in Miami, to take care of Barbara. The two of them moved into room 137 at the nearby roadway inn so that Barbara could recover and prepare for her final exams. Christmas was just eight days away and they were looking forward to driving back home to Florida for a family holiday. Barbara and her mother went to bed early that night to ensure that Barbara got plenty of rest. They wanted to get rid of her fever and give her the very best chance of getting well again. Shortly after four o'clock the next morning, Tuesday the 17th of December, they were awakened by a loud knock on their door. A man who identified himself as a policeman said that there had been a terrible accident and that Barbara's fiance, Stuart Hunt Woodward, had been seriously injured. He claimed that he needed to talk to Barbara immediately. Mrs. Mackle went to open the door. Barbara said, no, don't. But it was too late. 
Outside the door was a stranger, Gary Christ, holding a shotgun. And his accomplice, dressed as a man but actually Christ's girlfriend, Ruth Eisman Shear, she was armed with a pistol. They burst into the room and held their weapons to the heads of Barbara and her mother. Do as we say and no one will get hurt. The two women were defenceless and terrified. The gunman quickly chloroformed, bound and gagged Janet Mackle and left her lying on the motel room floor. They then forced Barbara at gunpoint from the hotel room into the back of their waiting car, informing her that she was being kidnapped. They drove about 30 kilometres to a remote pine forest in a wild and uninhabited place near Lake Berkeley in the Duluth area on the outskirts of town. Barbara was forced from the car and dragged to a pre-dug hole in the ground. The horror of her situation became clear when the light of the torch revealed a coffin-like box at the bottom of the hole. They were going to bury her alive. Barbara pled for her life. She told her kidnappers that she would do anything if they would just spare her life and leave her out of the box. She repeated over and over, I'll be good, I'll be good. But her pleas were in vain. Barbara was told that she would only live if she cooperated. She was pushed into the hole and forced to lie in the box. Kirst took an opal ring from Barbara's finger and ordered her to hold a crude sign that read, kidnapped, while he photographed her with a Polaroid camera. But he didn't like the picture because she was grim-faced. He ordered her to smile so that her parents would know she was alive. Then he photographed her again. Barbara was informed that there were supplies in the box that would keep her alive for several days, as well as a narrow plastic air tube that reached to the surface to provide outside air. Then came the dreaded moment. The top of the box was closed and screwed down. Next, she could hear the sounds of frozen dirt being shoveled on top of her. The first shovelfuls of soil were very loud. Then they became muffled. And then, silence. Within a few minutes, she lay buried alive under half a metre of earth. She was hysterical. She yelled out. She pushed with all her might against the roof of the box. She banged on the sides of the box, hoping someone would hear her. But there was just silence. She was all alone. The kidnappers contacted Robert Mackle with a ransom message. They demanded half a million dollars in ransom and gave detailed instructions on how the money was to be prepared and delivered. It was to consist of used $20 bills, not in serial order, and bound in $1,000 packets. The full ransom payment was to be put in a single suitcase. They threatened that they'd never reveal Barbara's whereabouts unless all their demands were met. If Robert Mackle agreed to the kidnappers' terms, he was instructed to place a classified ad in the Miami Herald newspaper under the personal section. He knew there was only one way he would ever see his daughter alive again. She was under a death sentence unless he paid the ransom. The moment of decision had arrived. Robert Mackle had to make the critical decision. Was he willing to pay the ransom? Well, there was never any doubt in Robert Mackle's mind. His daughter's life was all that mattered. He immediately withdrew the money and followed the kidnapper's instructions. He placed the ad in the newspaper, loved one, please come home. We will pay all expenses and meet you anywhere at any time, your family. That night, the ransom payment was prepared. The money was carefully counted and placed in a suitcase. On Wednesday, the postman delivered a letter containing Barbara's opal ring and the Polaroid photo of her holding the kidnapped sign. And then at 4 a.m. on Thursday, exactly two days after the kidnapping, Robert Mackle received another phone call 
giving instructions for the ransom drop-off. Robert Mackle left immediately and placed the suitcase full of money on a sandy strip near a bridge just south of Miami along the bay as instructed. But the entire ransom process was disrupted when two police officers, who were totally unaware of the kidnapping, drove by and spotted two suspicious individuals carrying the large, heavy suitcase. When they went to investigate, the kidnappers dropped the suitcase and fled safely on foot into the nearby woods. However, the FBI found their abandoned car. Inside the vehicle, not only did the authorities find the documents giving the kidnappers identities and former addresses, but they also found the other photograph of Barbara Mackle in the box holding the kidnapped sign. Robert Mackle was devastated when told of the accidentally bungled ransom drop-off. He feared that the kidnappers would now abandon the ransom deal and leave Barbara to die. Nothing else mattered. He just wanted to get his daughter back and he was willing to sacrifice everything to make that happen. Robert Mackle placed a second ad in the newspaper for the kidnappers. That led to another phone call and a new ransom drop-off location. The second ransom drop-off was successful. Now the Mackle family waited tensely for a response from the kidnappers with information about their daughter. But no call came. They feared the worst. Nearly 15 hours after the ransom pickup, on the 20th of December, Chris called the FBI office in Atlanta and left vague directions to Barbara's burial site near Duluth. More than 100 agents rushed to the site. They spread out and began searching in a desperate effort to find her before she suffocated. But they couldn't find any sign of the living grave. The agents were about to give up the search when one man noticed a patch of freshly turned earth. He fell to the ground for a closer inspection and spotted the ventilation tubes. Frantically, the men began digging the ground with their bare hands and sticks, wondering whether Barbara would be dead or alive. 12 minutes later, their hands bleeding, the agents reached the coffin lid. They pried it off with a tire lever and there was Barbara, alive. The agents wept as they lifted her out of the box. After having spent nearly four days in dark, cold confinement, she was in remarkably good spirits. She was finally freed, thanks to her father's love and his willingness to pay her ransom. Barbara was flown in her father's jet back to Miami to be reunited with her family. And what a reunion it was. Robert Mackle had shown just how much Barbara meant to him and the family. He was willing to sacrifice everything in order to save her and bring her home. Do we need to wonder whether Barbara ever doubted her father's love after that? She'd experienced her father's love firsthand in a very special way. She knew that he and the family valued her above everything. Now consider this. Did the half a million dollar ransom cause her father to love her or did it reveal how much he already loved her? Of course, the money merely reflected the intense love in the heart of Robert Mackle for his daughter, Barbara. That special love, that intense love, is something humans desire. We all need it. We were made to love and be loved. If you were kidnapped, would anybody pay up to $20 million for you? Does anybody love you that much? Yes, someone does. You were loved that much and even more. Let me explain. One of the great themes of the Bible is the ransom theme. In fact, you cannot fully understand the golden thread that runs all through the Bible without understanding the ransom theme. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. 
For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold and silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. There you have it. You were ransomed not with $20 million, but with the precious blood of Christ. Now, please notice what this means. Ultimately, something's value is measured by how much another person will pay for it or give up for it. And if that's the measurement, your value is out of this world. God gave His only Son for you. He didn't just give the best He had. God gave everything He had, and He did it just for you. If you were the only person on this planet who was lost and needed to be ransomed, Jesus still would have come just for you. Can you imagine anyone paying a higher price for anything? Once you internalize the fact that God sent His Son to pay your ransom, you should never again struggle with self-esteem or feel worthless. God has eternally clarified your value. You are worth everything. You are worth dying for. You are worth going through all the pain of the cross. You matter. Jesus said He'd rather die than live without you. And so He paid your ransom and mine. But why was it necessary? Why do we need to be ransomed in the first place? Well, to find the answer, we've got to go all the way back to the very beginning of human existence. In the very first book of the Bible, the story begins with a perfect world. There was no sin or disease. Because God is love, He wanted to populate this perfect world with people who had the ability to respond to His love. He didn't want puppets or robots who were manipulated or programmed to behave in a certain way. He wanted people who had the power of choice. And so God created people with the capacity, the freedom, to respond spontaneously to His love. But when you give people the power to choose, you take a great risk because they may make wrong choices. They may choose to love or not to love. They may choose to be loyal or not to be loyal. But because God is love, He was willing to take that risk and give people the power of choice. Sadly, as time went by, our first parents, Adam and Eve, listened to the voice of God's arch enemy, Lucifer, and chose to follow him. They chose to rebel, to reject God, and give their loyalty to Satan. Just as Barbara Mackle's mother made a voluntary choice to let the kidnappers in, so our first parents made a voluntary choice to listen to the voice of the kidnapper, Satan, and let him into their lives. And so, in a sense, our first parents were kidnapped by Satan and held captive in sin. When Adam and Eve turned their back on God and invited Satan into their world, they were separated from God and life. Sin, rebellion, separates us from God. Notice what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you. People were made for fellowship with God, to be in harmony with their Creator. But when they sinned, they turned away from God. They rejected Him and rebelled against Him. But there's more. There are consequences associated with sin, with rebelling against God. Notice what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The wages of sin is death. The two people that God had created perfect and upright were now separated from God. That resulted in destruction and death. They had no ability to fix this situation. So the human race was doomed. The tragic end of their choice to rebel was destruction and death. Like Barbara Mackle in that dirt-covered box, unable to deliver herself, the human race was doomed 
unless help came from above. In a sense, we're all in a box without hope unless a ransom is paid. And this is where God intervened. He couldn't stand being separated from us, the people He loves. He was both willing and able to provide that help from above. He had a plan. He would come and pay the ransom Himself to set us free. He would pay the penalty for our sins and mistakes. The ransom wasn't in dollars or silver or gold. It was paid in blood, Jesus' blood. He died in our place. He died so that we could live. He paid our ransom in full. Listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Our ransom has been paid. We don't have to be held captive any longer, captive to sin, captive to guilt, captive to fear, captive to despair. We've been set free. Please notice the words of the most popular text in all the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, Jesus has paid the ransom to set us free, to give us life. And here's the good news. No matter how deep or dark your situation may be, Jesus will find you and set you free. No sin is too bad. No hole is too deep. No case is too hopeless. He's here to give us hope, to forgive our sins, to give us peace and happiness. All you have to do is ask and He will set you free. Why not ask Him to do that right now as we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Jesus, our Saviour and our Deliverer. We are so grateful that He has paid our ransom in full and paid the penalty for our sins and mistakes. We are so glad that we are no longer separated from You. We are so grateful that You are a loving God. Thank You for freeing us from sin, guilt and despair. Thank You for the peace and happiness You give us. We commit our lives to You and pray for Your blessing and guidance. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The story of Barbara Mackle's abduction and a father's desperate attempt to rescue her has fascinated and inspired people all over the world. Being buried alive deep underground was a terrifying experience. Her situation was hopeless. Her father knew there was only one way he would ever see his daughter alive again. She was under a death sentence unless he paid the ransom. Robert Mackle's love for his daughter was so great that he was willing to sacrifice everything in order to save her and bring her home. He paid the ransom in full to set her free. Sometimes, we can feel buried alive under the burdens and challenges of life. Jesus has paid the ransom to set us free and to give us life. And so if you're struggling with the challenges of life and are looking for inner peace and true happiness, if you'd like to get closer to God, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the book, The Greatest Rescue Ever. This book is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There are no costs or obligations whatsoever. Thousands have been blessed and inspired by this book, The Greatest Rescue Ever. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text us at 0436 or visit our website, www.tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. So don't delay. 
Call or text 0436 333 in Australia or 020 422 in New Zealand or visit our website www.tij.tv to request today's offer. Write to us at P.O. Box 5101, Dora Creek, New South Wales, 2264 Australia, or P.O. Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Phone or text 0436 333 5 in Australia, or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website www.tij.tv to request today's free offer. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed today's journey to Atlanta and our reflections on the Bible's ransom theme and the hope and peace Jesus brings, be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together and experience another new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. The incredible journey truly is television that inspires and changes lives. Until next week, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. <laughs>